Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Grid of Discussion panel here. I am Kimberly Helm, General Manager of the DERMS, Opus One DERMS product with the GE Grid um, Digital Organization. And today we have our General Manager, Josh Wong, a dear friend and colleague of mine um, that we're going to be having a discussion with here. He's the General Manager of Grid Orchestration. So welcome, Josh, and, and thank you for all joining us here today. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So to kick stuff off, um, Josh, very important question for you. As the founder of energy software company um, and now being acquired in part of GE. How has your vision of DERMS evolved? Yeah, thank you. And this is a great question because I, I started thinking about like the energy transition maybe 20, 25 years ago, right? And, and all these years, the my, my first roadmap was actually a 25 year roadmap back in mid 2000s of how the grid will progress over the next 25 years. And surprisingly or non surprising, not surprisingly, uh, the vision has pretty much remain consistent all these years, uh, perhaps because the energy transition is a very big, big problem to solve, and it will require all of us multiple decades to solve. But also I think the, the, the patterns of how we solve the energy transition has remained fairly similar. Um, for example, we understand that uh, in order to drive the energy transition, we need distributed energy resources, and with distributed energy resources, we need to empower the edge. But the edge needs a grid to connect to. Uh, the e electricity system is still a fundamentally an energy infrastructure. So the grid becoming the platform or the backbone of DER so that we can enable the energy transition has remained very, very consistent through all these years. So what is DERM specifically then? Is we really see DERM not only as, a, as an edge facing um, platform so that we can bring in all the DER information, but also just as fundamentally we see DERMS as the gateway and the hub to interface within grid management so that the grid can remain reliable, flexible, uh, dependable, as secure, as well as affordable as we push towards clean energy. And uh, last but not least, I, I, I'm happy to see that um, the term orchestration is now um, elevated from traditional DER management in which we are de orchestrating a whole uh, portfolio of DERs to understanding that orchestration also applies to the grid, that the grid has to orchestrate with all the DERs, with the grid assets, with the electricity markets, and so on and so forth. So that is really fundamentally uh, the vision, the grid as a platform for DERs. Awesome. So Kim, yeah. now my turn to ask you a question, and I, I'm, I'm glad you have really stepped up and now you are leading the DERMS portfolio, and I thank you so much for that. I'm excited at what's going to happen next and cheering you every step of the way. Uh, so for you, what is the most exciting thing to you about taking DERMS to the next level on the GE? Wow, there, there's a lot of exciting things. Um, I would definitely say, obviously, with the acquisition of GE acquiring um, Opus One into the portfolio and the business, it has really accelerated us forward. Um, it has given us investment and means to actually help our customers and drive to that net zero goal faster than I think we ever could as a standalone. Um, but really taking the business from that startup to scale that we really took from a proof of concept and you know just pilot engagements with our customers to full global operations and scale at an enterprise level. And, and one thing that was really surprising and I think benefits all of our customers out there is the fact that doing even a reverse integration that when we came in we really aligned the strategy with GE and the direction they're going as well and being able to leverage their products and bring it in faster which really does that acceleration for us um, and brings the customer value, which is critically important. And I think really talking about customer value, kind of going back to you for a second, Josh, you always hear me that customer value is critically important, driving business outcomes is critically important. Um, when you think of customer value and driving those outcomes, can you share your perspectives and thoughts with everyone out there on, on what is the most important when you think of DERs, managing the grid, um, and DERMS as an overall portfolio and everything kind of you're tapping into and we're doing here with GE for our customers and the industry, what would be that outcome if you could choose one um, as the most important that you see as, as a big value add for our customers? Yeah, there, there is never one, and one <laughs> is a very hard, uh, hard problem to solve. <laughs> um, talk about prioritization yeah. here when trying to transform the world. Um, but I, I would say, if there is anything, I would use the word balance, and balance under the energy trilemma. 
So it's one on three. That means I cheated. Um, so <laughs> That's okay. I think we need more than one. So let's hear it. <laughs> so the biggest problem to solve, uh, solve, as we know, is the energy trilemma. That means we need to make sure that as we make the grid cleaner, we will also maintain the reliability of the grid as well as the affordability of the grid. So let's dissect these three, right? To, 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 to be clean, we need DERs, we need the customers to be engaged, we need the edge as well, as well as larger, more centralized type of generation or clean energy generation. Um, and to be, but we, we cannot go clean without understanding that the grid needs to be respected. The grid as a platform needs to not stop being the bottleneck to the energy transition by choking or, or, or impeding the flow of clean energy. So making sure that the grid remains um, uh, uh, without violations, uh, constraint managed, that the grid can, um, can be safe, reliable, resilient, and stable. All of these are critical acts of orchestrating the grid. And last but not least, we cannot also uh, push for clean energy by sacrificing the affordability of the electricity system. We need to understand that there are those who may not have as much access to clean energy as others, and we need to make sure that as we go clean, we actually improve the economics of the system. So I, we call it triple sustainability or yep. sustainability cube, right? So make sure that as we go environmentally sustainable, we are also technically sustainable and economically sustainable. So the real trick then is how do we balance all three without sacrificing the other? And that requires a lot of collaboration with customers, understanding the demographics, the regulations, the uh, policies, um, and really each customer's roadmap to see how we navigate through these part, three parts of the energy trilemma together. So big long answer. But yes, balance. <laughs> yeah, customer partnership is key, right? That collaboration and working together and, and making sure you join with a, a trusted advisor is really what's going to move us forward to accomplish exactly. that. So, so perfect answer, and I knew you couldn't just pick one, so it's, it's all good. Um, so before we wrap, you've been doing some really, really exciting things. We had a big announcement here at Distributech in San Diego um, with Grid OS, um, and you're doing a ton of stuff with grid orchestration as well in your new role, um, elevated out to help us drive this forward, both for our industry, um, influencing our customers, and even joint with our partners now as well. Um, so let us in on a little bit of what, what you're doing and what you see as the next big thing and the innovation pillar that you're driving forward. Yeah, thank you. And it's exciting to, to also be able to accelerate and bring even more innovation to the industry and really accelerating that path from early stage innovation and research to now taking that to market. So I think uh, same thing, my, my vision and my commitment, my, my conviction has not changed at all. Uh, we continue, I'm continuing to do the good work of modernizing the grid towards a cleaner, more sustainable future. And uh, a few things that's, that's particularly interesting. One is the ability to, to orchestrate across GE, uh, GE Vernova as a portfolio of energy businesses. So taking DERMS or the similar design patterns around DERMS and looking at it across the energy system. So we are preparing for the grid of the future, not just uh, DERs or, the, or, or storage or electric vehicles of the future, but looking at the grid holistically. I think that is a very, um, a very powerful tool that GE can bring to the market. Uh, the other is also looking at um, data analytics. So I think that is really going to be uh, the biggest step function to drive innovation and change and value in this industry. So with the announcements of GridOS, I think um, what's exciting me is we are ability to bring data onto a common data fabric. So multiple systems, perhaps multiple stakeholders into a common data fabric, so it becomes accessible and usable for analytics. Uh, we are able to unify on a common network model, so we're all speaking the same language, and we can all run analysis off the same language. Uh, we can bring zero trust security, not that I don't trust you, but we can always <laughs> make sure that we can, we can communicate in a way that can be trusted. Yeah. And I think this is a fundamental requirement for this yeah. industry as we bring multiple parties together. Um, then last but not least, the hybrid cloud architecture, because we need to scale, not just innovation, but we need to scale computing power, reachability into all parts of the grid. So this, all this allows us to bring data together into one common place. But to do what, right? I think what's really attractive is the next, the next frontier of grid intelligence for me lies in bringing all the expertise around data, 
um, and, uh, and optimization and physics-based analysis and engineering with the next phase of generative AI. Yeah. And I think AI is a very misused buzzword. I think there are parts of the grid that are very mature for AI, such as forecasting. But I think now is a time where we come we, where we complement the engineering knowledge that GE has, as well as the AI capabilities that GE and the industry has. And I would say the industry has five, 10 years to catch up, but we can make that leapfrog uh, step in the next one or two years. So that to me is super exciting. That to me is the next big thing. Awesome. You know, Josh had mentioned it before, 25 years plus in the making and the vision and the passion still stands true for anyone that knows this man um, and being now partnered with GE, bring, being brought into the fold really is accelerating that vision um, to help everybody out there. So we're super excited to be here. Um, Josh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you everyone out there watching today. I'm very excited to share our journey with you and insights. So always great to speak with you. Likewise. So thank, you. thank you so much. Yes. Kim, all the best. Thanks everyone. Cheers.